So I'm here with Kevin again, and um, I'm actually going to hit on something today that most people don't like to talk about um, as far as making combos and the morphs and everything else, and that's uh, what we like to call lethal gene combinations. And I know that most people like to kind of shy away from talking about it and all that, but I think it's only fair to have it out there so some of the newer breeders know that it can happen, it does happen, and uh, it's unfortunate, but maybe with this it can help avoid somebody losing a clutch or wasting a clutch, what I call it. Here's Kevin McCurley again, he's going to show you guys some examples of, um, the one I want to start with right away is a Sable. I know it's not the most popular gene out there, but there's some stuff you can do with it that's, that's pretty cool, but at the same time, there are other combos you do with it that aren't, they just either don't live or when they do, they're not so perfect. Like, for example, that um, Sable Spider that you have here. So why don't you show us that and let us know what, kind of what happened with it. All right, I'll start with something, which is a double mutation. This is a Sable Time Spider. And um, I've hatched out a, a number of these. I've also hatched out like Bumblebee, Sable, and they basically, we have failure within the egg, so we have uh, embryos dying through development. Uh, sometimes we'll actually get them to hatch or come full term and then they die as they're hatching or come out of the egg, fail to ever feed. Um, and for whatever reason, I really can't clarify why, obviously we can barely clarify any of the stuff that's going on with these snakes. Um, when sable meets spider, it seems to take the spider's dingy but reasonable tendency and make it worse. So we start getting these snakes with uh, serious motor skill problems. And the, the snake that you're looking at right here represents probably uh, at least a dozen fails. But this is a spider sable that actually does eat, but um, to say it's perfect, uh, we definitely, so let's put it this way, it's not a snake I'm gonna put in a bag and send to somebody and go, ah, oh, it's great. It's, uh, he's, she is dingy, uh, but she eats on her own. She, um, this is often like a snake you're gonna count on to find a snake with like a dry shed or a snake sitting there with its rodent um, after you know, you've offered it a defrosted or fresh killed rodent and sometimes it loses sight of the animal in the cage. So there's definitely something going on with the motor skills, and um, I would avoid breeding sables to spider. Um, at that, I'd probably say maybe, I don't even know how I feel about sable to um, hidden gene woma or woma in general. I haven't tried it yet. Um, I will tell you that sable to sable can also produce um, snakes with some quirks, and uh, same kind of dinginess. I'm not saying you know all of them for sure, but most people that have actually played with this, this combination uh, usually don't get to hold one of these because they're usually dead. So this is a, this is a tough one. Then we can take something like, all right, this is um, this is like sable to simple recessive. So this is actually a sable pie. What's interesting, like my theory with the pies, once a pie meets with something that's a pattern anomaly it causes pretty much to blank out the canvas, so to speak, so we get this, you know, 95% white snake. So, uh, sable is for sure a color mutation, but it's also, uh, I think it's proving itself as a pattern variation too. So that's why we're getting this, you know, snake that's almost all white, because sable's a pattern and color mutation. Um, but no, it's not a very dramatic combination whatsoever. But, there's a good side to sable too. And this is where some people get maybe turned off, but I think um, Sable, Sable to Mojave, um, Sable to Phantom, um, Cinnamon, all that kind of stuff offers a lot of uh, potential, but I would definitely stay away from any of, any of the mutations with a slight head wobble. So like Spider, maybe Woma, although probably at some point I am going to do Spider, I mean, uh, Sable. Sable Woma, just to see what happens. But uh, Rafi's point is, there's some of these mutations or combinations that I know better because of failures, don't do again. I just know, don't put those together. And this is definitely Sable, you kind of got to watch yourself. But there is still a good side to it, you just have so to pick one, and choose. This one, when I have it out like this, if I just, if you just hand it to me like this, I'm like, you know, that's pretty all right. When I came in today and, and I told Kevin what I wanted to do, and he opened the drum, I'm like, well, it's dead. So I'm like, okay, so we're going to show them that they die. He's like, no, 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 just touch it. You pick it up and then it, it kind of flips around again and it starts looking 
kind of normal, so, um, I don't know, it's kind of a weird one, I guess. You know, it's not as bad as, uh, um, I guess the pearls, for example. Oh, yeah. The pearls, pearls are a lot, pearls I think it's a lot more pronounced, you know, in the pearl. I had made, I had uh, made a bumblebee sable that I raised to a, a, a fair size and it failed. It just was always dry shed and sometimes when you're a breeder, you, you get really frustrated, just like, you know, I could sit here and hold its hand, so to speak, uh, throughout its life, but ultimately um, it's going to fail unless we give it that extra care. And generally, you know, if I produce a snake like that, it's a good snake to give away to somebody. You know, generally somebody who is into babying snakes, I get a little uh, overwhelmed by the sheer number of snakes and therefore I can overlook stuff. Okay. But uh, right. they do look cool. All right, so next, uh, next animal that I know um, doesn't work out so good. And this is, there was a post actually on, um, on the BLBC, on the Bush League uh, Breeders Club uh, forum that somebody uh, hatched I, I should have written the name down, I'm sorry about that. But it was a uh, champagne spider. Been there, done that. And they hatched it out and they looked, you know, and everybody was excited because it was there. It was, it was okay for a while. I mean, and I knew what was going to happen. Unfortunately, I didn't know that this person was doing this pairing or anything, but I knew that was coming and I saw the, the thread on there and I'm like, okay, cool, you know, it's there. But I pretty much just said, you know, wait for it. And you look a few pages into it and then somebody asked for a, uh updated picture and the person, the breeder actually came out and said that the, the animal actually died. Um, I don't know how it died, like why it died, if it was a starvation or whatever it was, but I know that it, it passed on, it passed on um, and I knew it was going to happen because that combination, again, that's just, that's a work. So you look, you know, champagne spiders doesn't work, but obviously with spiders and other things, you can make incredible animals and then with champagne and other things, you can make just, I'm not trying to, to, to undermine any particular morph for this video, so please don't, don't take it that way. I'm just trying to let you guys know the things that we know for a fact just don't work to save you the, the trouble of you know making that combo and, and wasting a clutch of animals, which takes you know a lot of time and effort to, to get. So I mentioned the champagne and the spider, so that doesn't work, but then you have some other champagne stuff here that you can show us that obviously does work. So why don't you grab some of that, Kevin, and let us know what, what you have that Early on in the game, I started breeding the champagne into some of my weird stuff, and we started making what we call PCPs. And that's just a goofy name. Everybody should know that I make up stupid, goofy names. And it just means that each one of them is very different. They did not look like what I would expect them to look like. Um, I'm not even quite aware of what the gene is that's causing it to do that. But we just call them PCPs. And uh, a lot of these are successful. You get, you know, pastel PCPs. You get uh, these are variations. Sometimes they they come out basically uh, leucistic or paradox. I don't know how well you guys can see this, but these are champagne combos that um, that are good. And I know there's going to be a whole bunch of champagne combos. Um, I can tell you, I, I'm sure I probably produced the first champagne spiders and one was in a bunch of different stuff like that, and I had some pretty good failures. Uh, and I wasn't even sure what I was making because I was hatching out these whitish snakes or snakes with big pied areas, um, orange, just fantastic looking animals, and they were completely dingy to the point where I was like, oh my gosh, I got, I got the whole pearl thing going on again. And... Um, I was really confused if I was hatching a champagne spider. Like sometimes you get the champagnes and there that's a little bit of difference. I'm like, oh, maybe that's a champagne spider and that's a champagne woma, you know, as you mix into the hidden gene stuff or whatever. And then you're hatching out these crazy snakes and you don't know what they are. So across the board, I don't know what I was hatching. But um, Raffi's talking about this video or a picture of a guy who hatched out a champagne spider and it's almost, you know, almost leucistic looking and you can kind of see it has like a certain soft look to it. I'm like, oh yeah, that's the look. And a lot of times you touch them and they're just, their heads are wobbling around. I bred um, champagne into my hidden gene woma stuff and it seemed to activate the pearl gene. So uh, what's interesting about hidden gene woma is you can breed to certain pattern mutations and it, it possibly mates, just like if I breed a lesser to a Mojave, it kind of fulfills the whole luc leucism uh, attribute of the pairing. And it seems like there's certain mutations of our breed of hidden gene woma that activate the hidden gene uh, factor. And I definitely say champagne hidden gene stuff uh, 
took me in a direction I didn't really want to go. Uh, so I made a lot of really good looking snakes that are just, you know, freezer pets, unfortunately. So, uh, but then you have this stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think this is, I'm just going to stick myself out on there. I would probably guess that the champagne of champagne is going to be a fail. Um, I'm not even going to try doing it. Uh, I don't know if somebody else has done it or whatever, but I'm going to have a hard time imagining or feeling confident that the champagne of champagne is going to give us this great snake. I think it's going to be junk. Because I see the champagne having a tendency for dinginess and weakness, but then you know we get, you know, you get awesome stuff like this. That's like a super pastel champagne, -y whatever. This is an awesome snake. This is a hidden gene, uh, Woma, granite, yellow belly fader, and the color scheme is a little brighter than normal. This is an awesome snake. And so the hidden gene is, is as well as it makes fantastic stuff. It can also set you up for for some uh, some failures, and I've definitely had I've produced quite a few. And that's where the whole pearl thing comes hidden, from. Hidden, yeah, I the, love the, the pearls. They look so great, and then they just unfortunately don't make it. Um, yeah, they look fantastic. They're just none are the same. They're all just very variations of some you know awesome combination, but they they don't necessarily work. So you know it's kind of lying breeding stuff like that, but which is really funny because I've pretty much given up. So I went and bred a bumblebee pin and she het pied to a soul sucker. So that's hidden gene woma meeting uh, hidden gene woma granite, maybe with some other things, meeting uh, hidden gene lesser. And I bred them together and I forgot that the bumblebee pin and she het pied also had, came from a, a hidden gene woma litter. So, didn't think anything about it, and I started hatching out strange stuff. We hatched out this little fellow. And other than the fact that he's alive and he doesn't have any motor skill issues, I think we kinda maybe mixing up enough genes. I don't know really I don't know really how to say what made this one work, but this is what I would probably consider is a soul sucker pearl. So we got like almost like a pattern of the snake uh, with like a white sides and a yellow. Perfect, that perfect stripe on the top is, I, I mean, I know the camera will see it there, but I'll do pictures. I've shown pictures of this animal before, and what I'll do is I'll insert a picture for you guys to see uh, in the video what we're talking about. Uh, this guy is like really perfect. It's basically like a soul sucker without the color and the rest of the pattern on it. It's, it's really weird. It's like a faded soul sucker type thing. Uh, which actually, this is that's a soul another soul sucker combo, right? Yep. And uh, that's a, that's a really you know a good one. Uh, it works well. There's no problems with it. So uh, if you if I were to hold a normal pearl, I'd be like I'm gonna put my glasses on and be embarrassed and stuff like that because yep. they're they're completely. Woo, and if you go dingy. back, if you go back in my videos, I think it was the first or the second video that we ever did that you showed a pearl that actually when you pulled it out of the tub, it started. Flinging his head around, the head. best examples of, for people to see what it is that they do, and and that particular snake already passed away, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Show those. Well, what's interesting about the, the pearls too is I started outbreeding them and make them less genetically linked, and I started producing pearls that you would think, hey, this is this is better. I'm like definitely going the right direction. Maybe I got this thing outbred enough, and then by throwing in all these other genes, which I don't really know how the genes are going to affect genetic stock, but these are so far removed when they finally bred together, maybe there's enough other things there to level it out. 